Awesome. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's awesome to see everyone. Uh, yeah, that was, Naomi had sent a sound file of her performing the, just the music portion of Morning is, Morning is Broken and uh, came out pretty well. So, well, Naomi always plays really well, but it came through on the video really well. So that's really great. Um, I just wanted to say hi. I wanted to say thank you for being here today as we worship together. It's gonna to be a little bit different. Um, and probably until we get into some kind of rhythm, it'll seem a little bit different each time. But we're gonna try this way because we have a little bit more interaction and uh, we'll be able to share a little bit more. Um, just a few notes so that you can interact. Uh, let's see. You can chat with us directly, and when we get to the time of prayer, uh, I'll ask for people to share their prayer requests with us. Uh, I have a few prayer requests already that people have shared with me over the week, and I'll read those. But as I'm doing that, you are more than welcome to add your own prayer requests. Just send it through the chat function, which is in your, hold on a second, there. In your lower, it should be lower right corner. Um, just activate chat and you'll be able to to either send me a private message or um, let everyone see what your prayer requests are and we'll lift them up together. Um, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get to the announcements, things that are happening. Da, da, da. So until further notice, um, we're not going to have any meetings at church. And I know it's difficult for everyone because, well, we're used to meeting, gathering together and things like that. But uh, for everyone's safety, we're going to ask everyone not to meet. We've already told all of our folks who rent from us uh, that we're not gonna be meeting and they've all been really great about it. So um, we also, even though uh, you may have heard last night that Vice President Pence had claimed that worship was an essential service. Yay. Um, the bishop has requested that, that even though it is an essential service, that we do not gather. It's just that we can gather to create an online worship space, but we're not gathering at the church. Um, but because our Wi-Fi is not strong yet, we're going to probably keep doing it like this so that we can make sure that you get the best experience possible. Uh, plus, Naomi's recorded some awesome stuff and I'm excited to, to have you all hear it. So it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun actually. Um, we are committed this month to fighting hunger. And so I'm gonna be sharing some stuff with you during the sermon time about that but we are doing a virtual crop walk this year, and I hope that you'll support our team. Uh, and we're also still doing the, I apologize. We're also still doing the uh, um, Alameda County Food Bank uh, donations. So if you have food you wanna bring to the church, um, just leave them outside the door and I'll bring them inside, or uh, you can also donate to the church and just make sure we know that it's for the food drive. And on one of my grocery runs, I'll go out and buy a bunch of stuff to fill the, to fill the, the two really huge barrels. So, all right. Um, a lot of you are probably wondering about Easter and we don't have any answers yet. Hopefully 
We will soon, but given the state of everything and given the CDC's recommendation for eight weeks of isolation from large meetings, it's likely we'll be doing something creative and fun for Easter, but online. So just stay tuned for that. Um, we will be discussing uh, at our council meeting today about the about Easter, the Easter egg hunt, uh, all the <laughs> Easter celebrations, as well as Kids Day, Mother's Day, and Bazaar. And as we come up to come to decisions, we will definitely let everybody know. Uh, last but not least, if any of you have, um, if any of you want to join, sorry, if any of you have meetings that you want to conduct with committees or like the men's group or the women's group, um, let me know and I am happy to help you guys host a, a meeting on Zoom so that you all can talk and to share ideas and things like that. Um, I just want to let you know that, that we can and will find ways to be creative in worship and to be creative as a community and to come together. It's really important for us to stay in touch during this time. So I'm just going to be in prayer for everyone. All right. So having said that, let's go ahead and start with an opening prayer. And then I'm going to ask Naomi to introduce us to our song, but let's, um, wherever you are, if you could bow your heads in prayer, let's pray together. Gracious God Almighty, in this time of crisis and trouble, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless us, continue to help us find ways to love one another, continue to help us be creative in how we reach out to the world. We ask you, Lord, to protect us, to keep us safe, and to help keep others safe by enduring this sheltering in place. We pray, Lord, for all those that we love and care about, whether they're near or far, and ask you just to continue to bless them, Lord, and help them as, as we adjust to this temporary bump in our lives. We pray for the safety and welfare of all those that we care about. And as we worship together today, we just lift up, Lord, everything to you. In Christ's holy name, amen. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and ask Naomi to introduce our song and uh, our, our opening hymn. And I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Naomi? There we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. If you have a hymnal at home, please turn to page 145. Otherwise, the hymns were sent, this, uh, I think, last night to you on the bulletin. And our first hymn this morning is Morning Has Broken, something that's familiar to all of us and has a really encouraging and positive tone to it. Let's sing together. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Morning has broken like the first morning. 
Oh, you can actually applaud under reactions. That's what I'm going to do is, yay, yay, Naomi. That's awesome. Um, all right. Now, for us, it's the time that we can gather together in prayer. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to send in your prayer requests if you'd like for us to, to pray for something. Um, but I do have some already that I want to share with all of you. Uh, want to go ahead and lift up uh, Jimmy. Jimmy is uh, Cassie's mom's partner. And right now he has flu-like symptoms. They don't think it's COVID-19, but I'm just going to be in prayer for him and for Cassie's mom, Carol, that they're safe and that they are not going to get this. Um, both of them are, are, are older, and so obviously they're in the high-risk category, so let's keep them in prayer. Also, um, just want to lift up praise. Eve got into Florida Institute of Technology. She was hoping to do so. Uh, she wanted to get her degree in accounting or business. I think it's business. Cassie will correct me. Um, but accounting. And uh, so we're really, we're really happy for her. Um, she was very, very excited. It'll allow her to, to, to do online study while still serving um, uh, in St. Louis. Uh, really great news about Mary's brother. For those of you who know Mary, Mary Chang, her brother is improving. He's still on a ventilator. He still has uh, the virus, but um, he is doing better, and they're looking to take him off the ventilator uh, sometime soon. So the, the treatment that they gave him, the second treatment, seems to be working, which is great news. And also, Mary wanted to lift up her sister-in-law, Lana. Uh, pretty amazingly, she has started to really trust in the Lord more. Uh, Mary's been really excited about um, having her uh, ask more about God and about Scripture. So that has been really wonderful. Um, speaking of Mary, she has been able to walk her 10,000 steps. She's very excited. Uh, her health is returning and she's feeling strong. So just continue to keep Mary in your prayer, but we're just grateful to God that she's doing so well. Uh, she wanted to make sure to thank everyone for all the encouragement in your prayers, your emails, your cards, everything, that she just really appreciates everyone's support. Um, wanted to, uh, Jill lifted this up, and, and it's really important just to lift up prayers for people to overcome their, their fears about the virus. Um, it's been, uh, especially for people who are um, of Asian descent, there have been attacks lately of, on people who are Chinese or look Chinese, and that is a obviously a really sad, especially for those of us who, who know what that's like, um, that's really sad. And so we want to lift up in prayer our country for understanding and acceptance and love, and also for all those who are affected um, by these attacks. Uh, wanted to lift up uh, my friend Andrea. Her, her brother Scott has advanced prostate cancer and is going through second round of treatment. So we're just in prayer that, that the treatment works, that um, he will have healing. Uh, we just want to keep him, uh, Scott, and his family in prayer um, for healing and wholeness during this time. A bunch of uh, friends of mine, I asked if they want any prayer. My friend Ray asked for prayer for her family, especially for distance learning. I think that any of, any of us who have kids probably are struggling with that. Um, for my friend Phil and his family, uh, for Cassie's sister Susie, who is, was supposed to go on a mission trip, um, which obviously had to be rearranged, and I assume it's canceled right now. I don't know for sure. Um, but I, I assume it's canceled. Um, also, wanted to lift up Jack and Nancy McFarlane, uh, Janet's longtime friends and colleague. Uh, we just 
They've been quarantined on a small ship off the coast of Chile. Oh, Janet, that's tough. And they're hoping to be able to fly home soon. So we want to keep them in prayer and, and hope that, goodness, that, that they'll, they will be able to come home. Um, wanted to lift up um, praise for Justin and Cheryl's birthdays. So that's awesome. Happy birthday, Cheryl. Happy birthday, Justin. Uh, and just wanted to, to lift them up and to give praise to God. Were there any other prayer requests that we can lift up together today? For those of you watching this later, I'm pausing to give people a chance to, to type in. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, if you'll all join me, let's go ahead and bow together in prayer. Let's pray. Let's lift all these things up together. Lord, hear our prayers. Lift up, we lift up to you all these things that are in our hearts and in our minds. We pray, Lord, for your guidance and wisdom during this time. We pray for the health and welfare of not only our congregation, but our friends and our family and the world around us. For all those who are suffering, we pray for healing and relief. For those who are lonely and isolated, we pray for your presence. And we also pray that you will help us to reach out to those who need us. That you will help us to be creative in creating community. We pray, Lord, that you will help quell our fears and anxieties that you will continue to be a source of strength for each and every one of us. And that you will help us out, Lord, as we navigate a whole new way of living for right now. We know, Lord, that eventually this time will end and, and we just are looking forward to that day. But in the meantime, help us to have patience and love and understanding as we learn how to deal with this together. And we lift these things up to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Um, yeah, Naomi asked me to introduce the next song to you all. Uh, I asked if she would play um, 40 by you 2 and, and I'm going to have you... Uh, hear that after Paul does the does the reading for today. Um, it's a song of waiting, but it's a song of the psalmist David just having hope in the Lord. Um, that even though things are tough, that he knows that the Lord will lift him up. And so we're going to share this song. But first, I want to have Paul share in a reading um, from Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. So, Paul, you want to go ahead and share with us, please? Okay. Um, as Reverend Craig said, um, this morning's reading is from Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. For the director of music of David, a psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard me cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. This is the sins the reading for this morning. Amen. Thank you, Paul. 
You're welcome. All right, so we're gonna hear, uh, this is a special treat. We're gonna hear a, a song that Naomi played for us. And I will, I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do. Let me go ahead and forward it there. And. Please start it over. There we go. Naomi, that was great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start our our time together today with a sermon, with a reading from Joshua uh, chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. If you want to follow along, you're welcome to. I'm going to read it out loud. But if you'd like to follow along in your Bibles, um, we'll read from Joshua 1, verses 7 to 9. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to your forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you by strong, be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God and the people said, thanks be to God. You know, hope will not stop the coronavirus from spreading. Hope will not protect families from getting it. 
and hope will not find a cure. There's often a misunderstanding about what hope is and what hope can do. It won't solve the crisis, but I'll tell you that we need hope probably more than anything else right now. I talked to, uh, when I was at Roswell UMC, Rick Page was one of our congregants. And uh, as we talked together, he was quoting from his book that hope is not a strategy. But while it's not a strategy and while it's not a cure, hope is probably the one ingredient we need more than anything right now. Hope is the fuel that's gonna see us through through tough and difficult times. Hope is what will carry us. Hope is what will help us when we run into a brick wall and we just need to find a, a, way, a way through it. Hope will help us find the door to push through to the other side. Hope is a fuel for our soul. And it's a good thing that God has it in abundance. Now, I can only imagine what the Israelites were thinking as they walked around the walls of Jericho. So if you don't know the story, uh, God promised to Joshua and the Israeli people that they would see the promised land. And, and so as they're about to enter into Canaan, which God had promised to them, God promises that he will be with them. Now, just to give you some context of, of how big Canaan is, Canaan's a pretty big place. Um, Canaan encompasses all of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, as well as parts of Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan. So it's a pretty big chunk of land, especially for a bunch of people who are walking. And as they come up to Jericho, they see that it's fortified. There's this big wall around it, protecting the, the soldiers and the people inside uh, from anyone who might do them harm. So does, when God promises to be with them, does he show them like some sort of secret entrance so they can sneak into the city? No, he doesn't do that. Does God tell them where they should attack the wall because it's less fortified? No, God doesn't do that. Instead, God tells them, hey, walk around the wall six times in six days. Just once a day, walk around the wall. Then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around the wall seven times and then shout at it. And it's going to just fall down. I can only imagine what it must have been like to, first of all, to be a soldier up on the wall, seeing these guys walking around it. They must have thought they were crazy. And to be a soldier in the Israeli army must have felt the same way, except for one thing. By this time, Joshua had already shown how much God had trusted in him. He had already performed miracles in front of all these people. And so despite the fact that the, the advice sounded silly, they did it. They walked around six times, and then on the, on the seventh day, they walked around seven times and shouted at the wall, and then the walls came tumbling down. Hope fueled the impossible. Now, we are in the midst of our own time in the desert. We're in a time of anxiety, of insecurity, and of testing. And just to be clear, God is not, God did not create the coronavirus to test us. I think we can easily be confused into thinking that that's the case. Uh, and you'll hear that from some people who have a really deep misunderstanding about how God works in the world. It's just that through any tough time that we're going through, it's always a test of our faith. How well do we trust in God to see us through? Now, for us, we're in the middle of the desert. 
we don't know how far it'll be. We can't see the end. We don't know what the destination will look like when we get there. We don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know about you, but I find myself watching TV a lot. Uh, turning on the news, going to NPR, and, and hoping to, to hear some nugget of information that, that's good news. Um, but instead, I'm finding that there's a lot of things that every day something new seems to happen. I, I watch with sadness as the, the numbers of people who are affected and the number of people who die from this disease just keeps growing. I get messages from literally every company who has my email address. I don't know about you, but um, I, I, I'm not really worried about what Chuck E. Cheese thinks about the coronavirus. It's great. Uh, but I get these emails every day saying the 20 things that they're doing to help protect me. And I think to myself, you didn't wash your hands before when you were serving my food? I think especially though, my heart sinks for people who are alone. You know, being sheltered in place with Cassie and Emma and our dogs, I mean, I, I think after a few weeks, we're gonna drive each other crazy. But I'm so grateful that they're here. That there are a lot of people who don't have that. Who it's not easy to, to get out and go for a walk. And especially if they're sick. I, I just, my heart goes out to them most of all. But we are a people of hope. All I have to do is, is look in the Bible and I can read tons of stories of inspiration where people were in seemingly hopeless situations and God was there for them. I think about Abraham, how he and Sarah were worried that they weren't going to have kids. And God said that you will be the father to many nations. And he is. I think about David. Um, I, I think about how God looked at David and said, you're my guy. You're the one who's going to help lead the people of Israel. And so even though the, the Philistines had been attacking the Israelites, even though they were dominating them, that David in single combat came out against this guy who was way bigger than he was. And with one shot, felled Goliath. Even in death, I look at John's gospel and I, I hear the words of Jesus who said, I go ahead of you and I go to prepare a place for you. And because I do, you will be with me that not even death can take away our hope. But if all we had were stories from 2000 years ago, I think it would be tough for us to endure. I don't think it would be enough. If all we had was evidence from people who are long dead, I don't know if it'd be enough. But God did not stop talking and God did not stop acting at the end of the Bible. Even within the words of the Bible itself, I mean, John says that not everything that Jesus did was recorded. The, the miracles that he performed were not all recorded in this book. He says, these are written, though, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The story of God lives on in each one of us. I mean, gone are the days of the burning bush. I, I wish they were still here. I would love myself to see a burning bush. That'd be awesome. Uh, 
it's not likely that any of us are going to cross a river Jordan on foot and watch the waters being held back by some invisible force. That would also be awesome. But I'll tell you what's really awesome is that God has chosen to work within you and within me, within the people around us, that God is made incarnate, embodied in human form through each and every person in our lives. Every kind word, every prayer, every, every random act of kindness or not so random act of kindness is God being manifest in our lives today. So we come together. And until that time when we make it through the end, when we get through the desert, when this time of crisis has passed, until that time, we do what we can to be God's people in the world. Paul tells us in Romans 12, verses 10 to 13. And this is when I realized that I need a Bible of bigger print now. Um, Paul tells us, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. To me, that sounds exactly like what we need. We need to find ways to, <laughs> to love one another despite everything. We need to find ways to, to be joyful in hope, to be patient in affliction, to be faithful in prayer, and most especially to share with the Lord's people who are in need. The doors of the building might be closed, but the church is open. We are here for one another, now and always. So like I mentioned earlier, we have devoted the springtime to combating hunger um, especially. And there are lots of ways that you can do, even being sheltered in place, um, there are ways that you can participate in Berkeley Methodist United Church's effort to help those in need. Uh, if you're if you're running essential errands and you're you're out and about um, and you're near the church, if you have canned goods or or dried goods that you would like to donate, that we can um, put in the bin for the Alameda County Food Bank. Um, you can just leave it in the, at the door. You don't have to come in or anything. You just leave it at the front door and I'll go by and, and pull them in on a regular basis. Uh, if you'd like to donate money and um, just tell us that it's for the food bank and I will go out and buy a bunch of stuff with whatever you decide to donate so that we can fill up those, uh, those big barrels. More than ever, especially in this time, People are going to be hungry. People are going to lack the funds necessary to be able to go out and buy food on their own. So in whatever way we can help, I think it'd be great for us to participate. This year, we normally would do our crop walk next Sunday, but that has been called off in person. But they're going to do a virtual crop walk, and we do have a team. So if you want to donate to those efforts, um, the Berkeley Crop Walk does a lot of great work, and the, the money donated goes toward Church World Service that fights hunger and poverty all over the world, um, but also right here in Berkeley. A portion of the money donated will stay in our local community to help hunger and poverty here, uh, but it will also go to help those around the world who are suffering and in need. So join Team BMUC. Uh, there are details on our website. You can, you can check it out for yourself. And uh, you can help us 
fight hunger. Also, we're looking to keep people connected uh, within our church. And especially with the, some of our elderly folks who may not be able to get online and join us in worship like this, who, who may find the internet difficult to navigate, we want to make sure that we keep them connected to us too. So we're starting a, a, a kit team, keep in touch. And if you'd like to join or volunteer, please uh, let me know by emailing me or calling me or putting your name on, on the chat right here, down there, down there. Um, if you'd like to help us write letters or make phone calls to keep in touch with people who might be lonely or who might just need a friend or who might need, need someone to listen to them, um, please let us know. Lee came up with this idea. It's an expansion of what the CCMs are already doing, but we would love to find ways to, to keep in touch with those who need us. Uh, also, um, we're gonna start a Wednesday night social hour. And so at 7 p.m., uh, we'll, I'll send out a Zoom link. And if you wanna just come and chat, if you wanna share what's going on, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna eat and show off whatever you've got to eat, that'd be great. Um, I personally am gonna just, I'm gonna bemoan my Dodgers. I'm very sad. I, I don't know if they'll have the, the All-Star game ever in LA. If not, then this might be a collector's item. I don't know. Um, but we can share together in whatever's going on. So I will send out a link and we'll have a, a Wednesday night social hour. So Cassie thought of that idea and said, you know, it'd be great just to hear people and talk to people and see what's going on. So stay tuned for that. But in these challenging times, it's gonna take more effort from us to be the people of God. We're gonna to have to be creative. We're gonna to have to be intentional. We're gonna to have to reach out in new and different ways. It's important though, because we really are the hope of the world. We are hope for one another. It's through our love and our strength that together we'll see it through. That we can walk with those in need. We can walk with those in pain. And that even though we may not be able to physically be together, does not mean we can't be together. Let's do what we can to provide hope for our little corner of the world today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, so Naomi's gonna share a little bit about our closing hymn. Go ahead, Naomi. Well, if you have your hymnal at home, you can turn to hymn number 707. Otherwise, you can refer to the online bulletin that was sent to you. And this is the hymn of promise. I know this is a favorite song of many of us. And it definitely talks about this hope that Reverend Craig was sharing with us. And this time you may have already started to see some of those unanswered questions, but there are some perhaps little blessings here and there that maybe God is bringing into your life. So while we are kind of navigating this time of uncertainty and fear, I think that many of us can start to agree that there are little things, little blessings, and that's what this song is about. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and sing. Feel free to, to sing aloud um, as we share in the hymn of promise.
Yeah, Naomi, that was beautiful. So, um, yes, you have to endure my speaking to get to Naomi's really good singing. Uh, but now as we close out, we're going to go ahead and close as we always do. Um, this might be a little bit of familiarity for everyone. We're going to sing, Lead Me, Lord. Um, then I'll offer a benediction. But I don't want you to go away after we end the session. Um, I'll unmute everyone and give everyone an opportunity to to share with one another for a while, to talk. Uh, if you just want to say hi to each other, there's a long list of people who are here. So please feel free to say hi and and uh, to share. We'll have a little bit of, of social time and fellowship uh, after the service. But let's go ahead then and let's sing together, uh, Lead Me, Lord. heaven we just are so grateful for this opportunity to share with one another and to be together we pray lord that you will just continue to work within us as we work to be the people of god in the world today that even though we're physically apart we are together and lord it is a blessing to be able to share in this time with one another so we lift up all praise and thanks to you until we can gather again, we'll see everyone else next week. Amen. All right, everyone, I'm going to open up the chat and stop the recording.